Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Remnant 2 video. So I was in the process of putting my next video together when the DLC news dropped. That's right, we're getting an official DLC for Remnant 2. It's going to be based in the Loathsome biome and it drops on November the 14th. If you haven't already, you should check out the official video. It looks pretty cool. I don't have any of my own footage to show, obviously, so I'm just gonna roll some B-roll in the background and I just wanna share my thoughts on the DLC uh, based on the announcement and do a little bit of speculation based on what we know and what we've seen in the past uh, from Gunfire Games with their previous DLC. So what we know for sure is that this DLC will add a third world variation to the Loathsome biome. In addition to having the Beatific Palace and Morrow Parish starts, there will also be a third Forlorn Coast option. Until more DLC release, uh, this will be the only world that can potentially generate uh, with three variations. In Remnant 1, we did see a DLC that expanded an existing world uh, with the Swamps of Corsus DLC, but Corsus only had one world variation, so it basically just added new side dungeons to that world, and it did add new story content that could only be accessible from Adventure Mode, oddly enough. It was kind of a weird decision to do it that way for the Swamps of Corsus DLC, so I definitely prefer this route they're taking by adding just a brand new world variation. So the story is that the True King has woken up. If you weren't aware, the True King was the original ruler of the Fey world. He was betrayed by his council, who used an enchanted dagger to put him to sleep, and then basically Faerun slash Faelin took his place. The Fey describe him as a brutal but efficient king, the Fae basically treat him like a god, and for whatever reason, the One True King designated the Red Prince to be his heir. So as I said, the One King is now awake and he's pissed off, and apparently corrupted by the Root. It's unclear if the Root are the one who woke him up, or if this is a result of our player killing Faerun slash Faelin that woke him up, or a continuation of the Council storyline where we pulled a dagger out of his neck, maybe that woke him up as well. We'll have to wait and see, but either way, the king's awake and he's pissed. Also, this new aggression spurred on by the Awoken King has caused the Dran to apparently double down on their aggression as well. So we can see the conflict heating up on both sides, uh, although probably a little less on the Dran since this is focused mostly on the Fae. So that's what we know about the story so far, but what can we expect to see in terms of bosses, weapons, items, etc.? Well, of course, I think we can safely assume that the world boss is going to be the one true king. I don't think he's going to look exactly like how we've seen him in the council chambers. Since he's now corrupted by the root, we're probably going to see some nasty version of him uh, akin to how the Ravager looks before and after corruption. As for other bosses, I think it's safe to assume that we're going to see a water type boss. I don't think it's an accident that this place, Forlorn Coast, is based on the coast. We might get some sort of Kraken boss or something that comes crawling out of the water. Yeah, we're gonna get some sort of water boss and you can quote me on that. In the trailer, we've seen a Fey Knight type character, which he looks pretty cool, but not Red Prince cool. I would imagine we're gonna get some sort of sweet melee weapon as a reward. Hopefully something that will actually contest the undisputed champion of World's Edge. Okay, so this next boss theory I have is a bit of a stretch, but bear with me. So data miners successfully predicted that uh, Losum was going to be the next DLC. This was pretty shortly after the official game release, so a, a few months ago now. There was also speculation that Namue was originally intended to have a boss fight. Now my guess is that this idea was scrapped since Namue became sort of a secret weapons vendor. But it is possible that now with this DLC that they may introduce her boss fight. There is this screenshot of Namue in Chains, which if nothing else shows we're going to get some more Namue content. It's possible she may be corrupted by the Root as well, or it's possible we can get like a metaphysical battle. Again, this is a bit of a stretch because they likely still want her accessible as a weapon vendor even in the third world variation, but I thought I'd just throw it out there as a bit of fun speculation. Okay, so let's talk about potential weapons we're going to see. I already mentioned likely a melee weapon coming from the Fey Knight, whose name is Bruin by the way, I just looked it up. There's also this screenshot of a villager holding like a pickaxe looking melee weapon. Likely this will also be a weapon we can get for our players. Also maybe this outfit too? We might be able to get some Bloodborne looking drip for our characters finally. Also there's this hook looking weapon we can see briefly in the trailer. 
I'm going to throw out a random guess here and say that we can also look forward to a blunderbuss type weapon for the player. In the trailer we've seen there's some new Gundran, uh, very similar to the ones we've seen in Losum already, but now their rifles kind of shoot a spread like a buckshot, and I think we're going to see a variation of this weapon available for the player. Likely it's going to be like a spore bloom, but with longer range would be my guess. Again, I'm just speculating, but it'd be hecka cool to have like a blunderbuss type weapon. And since we're already speculating, I'm going to go even further. I'm going to guess in this DLC that we can get the chainsaw as a melee weapon. I've got no evidence of this and nothing to even hint at this, other than the fact that this is a loathsome based DLC and that Gunfire Games likes to put crazy weapons in their DLC. I would speculate that the chainsaw operates much like a greatsword in terms of its long horizontal swings, and that the charged melee attack would utilize the chainsaw aspect. Maybe it'll have a built-in bleed modifier, that'd be cool, but I don't know, seems pretty unlikely. Again, I'm just totally speculating on this one, uh, so don't be surprised if I'm completely wrong here. That's pretty much all I can think of for weapons. So let's talk a little bit about the new archetype that was announced, which is the Ritualist. From what we can tell, this is going to be a debuff focused class, so likely a class that can utilize the existing debuffs in the game, like Bleed and Shock, and may be able to also inflict different types of Curse, and maybe even Blight as well. It's hard to say how exactly this class is going to work, but I imagine we'll see something similar to the Alchemist, but with debuffs instead of buffs, of course. The big question for me is how are they going to keep this class uh, interesting, I guess. Likely this new DLC is going to drop before I finish the new game Apocalypse Archetype ranking series, so I'll likely be including the new archetype in that series as well. Anyways, on a personal note, I am very excited for this DLC. I'm looking forward to fighting the new bosses and eventually adding them to my Losing is Fun challenge videos. If you haven't seen those videos, it's where I challenge the bosses with a negative 220% damage reduction on Apocalypse difficulty. But yeah, until then, all we can do is wait. The DLC drops on November the 14th, supposedly. So until then, I guess there's not much more we can do except wait. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like. And if you like Remnant content, please consider subscribing. I do a lot of Remnant stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.